Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm just going to get us set up on Facebook. Did you have a good weekend? I did have a good weekend. This is the uh, start of my birthday week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 29 again? Again, 29. Uh, you know, it worked out so well the first time. I thought it would do it again. <laughs> I love it. You're going to have cake and ice cream, make a wish, blow the candles, right? All that good stuff. The whole thing. I love birthdays. Oh, nice. All right. We're going to go live and get this party started. Rock and roll. Awesome. Okay. Okay, my computer is doing weird things. There you guys are. All right. Hi, good morning. It is Monday morning, September 14th. I was just telling my friends here on Zoom, it is the start of my birthday week. So um, it is a good week for sure. And I don't know about you guys, but I love birthdays. Do you guys like to celebrate your birthday? Yes. You should. Because <laughs> it's an I'm anticipation. Not, what's that? <laughs> It's the anticipation of the birthday that's so exciting, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be 49 on Friday. So it's interesting because, uh, you know, whenever you hit that, that age with a nine in it, you're realizing, like, you're ending one decade and starting another. So I have been thinking a little bit about that. I love birthdays because it is the one day that belongs to you right? It's, you don't share it with, well, you could, but you know what I mean? It's not like Christmas or Thanksgiving, which have their own meanings, of course, but it's your day. It's the day that the world got you. And so I've just always loved birthdays. Um, I love celebrating my birthday because it always, it's always an indication of life is continuing to grow and move forward. I can celebrate where I've been um, and also really get excited about the future and I think it's great to celebrate other people's birthdays. I always make a big fuss. So uh, I'm excited to, uh, to, to just recognize that life is good. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. I didn't prepare slides or anything because I just really wanted to come on here and chat. And hello, good morning to my Facebook group out there. I would love for you to uh, use the uh, chat and say good morning and, and comment. I'm going to try to follow along actually with you on Facebook a little bit more than I usually do. I'm going to try to figure that out as we go along. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to kind of come on and talk to you all um, heart to heart a little bit. Uh, and it's funny, you know, starting this conversation about birthdays and, you know, new beginnings, new years, new seasons, you know, we're, we're feeling, you can feel that fall is coming. You can feel that the seasons are changing. And I think that a new season, whenever we can feel that transition, that awareness is opportunity, right? Because when you can feel yourself in that in-between, you can feel summer's going out and fall is coming in. And maybe you can recognize that in your own life where you can feel where one season of your life is ending while you're stepping into that new season. That's, that's a really um, exciting place to be because awareness leads to so many other things, right? So what season are you in right now in your own life? And maybe that's a question you wanna write down and work on you know, throughout the week and think about it and kind of meditate on it or journal on it. Um, if you could call it something, what would you call it? What season are you in? And is there, no, not is, what? is your greatest opportunity right now because there's always an opportunity. I think that, you know, we have to realize right now it's probably not enough to just know. Like I think awareness and knowing is, is so important, but is it really enough to just know or is it, is it really about knowing how to? So as you recognize the season that you're moving into in your life and you decide to, to name it or call it something, and start to be aware of the opportunities in front of you, right? What do you need to know how to do right now? 
That's another question I want you to write down. Carmen's shaking her head. I love that. Do you mind if I call on you right now? Uh, yeah. Do you mind chatting with me for a minute? What, what resonated with you just now when I said that, Carmen? Um, I'm in the process of moving physically. So this is like on point. And I can, I can feel what you're saying, the anticipation. And I sometimes feel that I don't transition well. Like I get, I get like, like <laughs> so I, 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 that's what resonated with me when you said that. What do I need to know to get to that next level? Mm -hmm. and, and if I just knew the little pieces, maybe I would be a little bit more comfortable than seeing this overwhelming picture. So perhaps, the, you know, you can ask yourself, well, okay, what do I need to know? Mm -hmm. Even at the smallest, like, what is the first step? What do I need to know? Um, and, and what do I need to know how to do? Change, the only thing I can tell you, sister friend, is change is good, right? Change brings growth and opportunity. And so it's, it's how do we embrace change rather than fear it? Right. What great things are coming your way because of it? I think, I think in the knowing, right, knowing how to live a big life, um, we all talk about, if I asked anyone, anyone would say, yeah, I want to live a great big life. Of course I do. Yet, if I, told, if I asked you how to get there, would you know? And I think that is the opportunity right now is, you know, how do we, how do we create the steps, even if they're small, and even if it feels like it is, um, a tiny little crawl towards towards the bigger goal. How do we create those steps so that we can incorporate ways to live a bigger life, right? Because um, I think that we can get stuck in our own thinking, and and then as we get stuck in our own thinking, it'll it just creates us getting stuck in our life, and we don't take steps moving forward. Has right. anyone? Can anyone relate to that? Or am I the only one who's ever felt like I can get I get stuck, right? No. So how do we get uh, unstuck? How do we move forward emotionally? How do we move forward mentally? You're moving forward physically, which is also a, you know, a great way to change our thinking and our uh, emotions. But you know, I think a lot of people are stuck right now. And, and I know we've talked a lot about this. You know, 2020 is uh, full of you know, unpredictable things. Um, and uh, you know, I just heard something on the radio the other day. He was talking about something strange that happened, like really strange. And the guy goes, it was so 2020. <laughs> you know, so this has been a year of really unpredictable things to, ha to happen around us. And it's really tested how w resilient we are and how we face adversity. And so, the you know, talking about new seasons and growth and getting a year older, um, all those things are inevitable change. I put on our Facebook group yesterday that we can do hard things. And so I think for us, the opportunity is how do we meet those challenges? How do we uh, develop a sense of knowing that we can come out really better on the other side, not just get through it, but come out better for it? What are the skills? What are the um, ideas that we have to develop? How do we really embrace having this big, beautiful, gigantic life. It doesn't just happen on its own. You know, we, I believe that, um, well, I believe in God and I believe that God has a plan for me and for you. And I also believe that I have to get up every day and co-create that life with him. Like he gave us the gift of free will. And, and I, you know, I'm just going to go here for a second. Uh, so forgive the sermon, but again, in my beliefs, I believe God gave us the gift of free will. We're here to do amazing things on this planet. We're not just programmed like robots to, to you know, fill out a certain um, pre-plan. Uh, However, think about this. If, if God gave us the gift of free will, why aren't we using it? Why aren't we taking initiative to create the plan, the dream, to co-create, to get out there and take control of our lives in a way that create the outcomes that we really want? So that's probably my big mojo mes message to you this morning is we're starting a new season. We're starting a new season in the year. We're starting a new season in our lives. We're constantly growing and changing. Thank God. We're constantly evolving. And so what do you want to do with it? So I'm going to give you a couple questions to work on this week. I gave you a few already. Another question I'd love for you to write down is to ask yourself, what do I really want right now? 
And I, and I want to put the emphasis on really and right now. So what do you really want right now? Because all we have is today. We're not really guaranteed much more than that. All we have is right now. And all we can do is focus on the present. Because when we focus on the present, we will feel much more in control. If you're spending a lot of time thinking about the past or getting stuck, as I said a few minutes ago, in the past, chances are you may be feeling sad, wistful, regretful, maybe even depressed, possibly, right? Because we tend to focus on some of the things that maybe we missed or didn't work out as well. Now, if you're focusing in the past to rejoice and celebrate on how you can re recreate more of that in your life, kudos to you. However, um, there's also benefit in not thinking too far ahead of yourself too. So not to sound like I'm contradicting myself, I want you to create plans, I want you to create these uh, visions for your future, yet you have to be, be healthy about how far into that future you're going because some of us can get a little anxious when we think too much about the future. But when we really anchor ourselves in today and we are focused on today and how we're going to make today better, then that's where our power lies because you can control how you spend your time today. You can control the 24 hours that you have and make decisions about what's going to make you feel purposeful, happy, satisfied, successful. You get to define all that. Because your definition of success is probably different than mine or anyone else's. So you get to decide how good it feels to have what you really want right now. Now, after you make a decision about, you know, what it is you really want right now, then you have to ask yourself, well, how will I get there? Who can help me? What can help me? What's the plan? And how do I measure my success? How do I know I'm on track? And then ask yourself, if I achieve this or if I can start the process and stay on track, is it truly going to make me happy? Now that's sort of um, maybe a little bit of a loaded question. Will it truly really make me happy? Because I will tell you, my friends, that your happiness really has to come from inside. Whatever you choose, whatever you choose to attain, whatever you choose to set as a goal, uh, can bring joy, can bring satisfaction, can bring a lot of pleasure. I will say, true happiness though has to start from inside. It has to start with you, mm -hmm. because I just said this to, to someone the other day. You know, and again, tying it back into how life is always changing. If we attach our happiness to something external, what happens when it changes? It goes away. It goes away. And how does that make you feel? Disappointed. Unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> and unhappy, right? Yet, what is always going to remain constant? You. You will always be there for you. Now, you may grow and you may evolve, yet at your core, that person that you are at your core is there always. And so if your happiness can come from that place, well, that's not going to change. That's only going to grow and improve. So to, to me, trying to, you know, really attach my happiness to something external or someone else is really not going to ensure that I have that happiness because it could change. So if I can create that connection that I create my own happiness from inside, and if I can live my life from inside outside, that's when things start to happen, right? And that's what I mean by your mindset and, and your perception. So as you approach this new season, it's time to really get clear about what we're thinking. It's time to get clear about how we're feeling or how we want to feel and realize that those thoughts are shaping your emotions and all of that is creating the results that you have in your life right now, right? So it's time to seize the day. Seize the day. So it's Monday. It's one of those reasons why I wanted to do this on a Monday morning. It's 
the beginning of a new week. I like, you can tell, can you tell I like like beginnings and ends? I like, it's funny. I don't think inside the box, but I do like when we can have like a little closure, like, oh, that was done. Now we move on to the next big thing. So it's Monday morning. It's the start of a new day. It's the start of a new week. What do you want to do with it? It's your week. It's your day. It's your life. Seize the day. Don't let the day just roll over you. What do you want to do with it? What kind of morning vibes? It's my new coffee cup, by the way. I mean, I, I think I'm going to have someone design a Monday morning mojo cup. Let me know if you know yes. how to do that. Um, so it's, it's a new day. What do you want to do with it? Right now, I want you to sit there, really, and think about it and write down whatever comes to mind. What do you want to accomplish today? What do you want to start today? What do you want to decide to do today? What small movement can you make today that could make a huge impact in your life? Because it's the smallest steps that sometimes bring the greatest opportunities. I think a lot of times we think we have to make these big, grand gestures, and it's chunking it down and making these little tiny steps that sometimes are going to move you forward in such a way that you will see huge change. So write down, what is that one thing that you want to do today? Because my friends, life is moving so fast around us. So fast. So I was saying that I'm going to turn 49 on Friday. When I think about technology, just that alone in my lifetime, right? Can you guys relate? Who remembers making a phone call and having to use the rotary? My kids wouldn't even know what I'm talking about right now. The rotary dial, right? And then I had to sit on my steps leading upstairs to the bedroom because the phone was on the wall and the cord wasn't quite long enough. So I'd have to sit on the steps to talk to my friends and talk quietly so my father wouldn't hear what we were talking about. And right, so think about how technology has changed. Now we have these things and it's a little computer that we carry around with us. And, and think about how life is moving so quickly, so fast around us. It's exciting, it's awesome, but don't let it run you over. Think about how you want to grow and evolve as well. Think about how you want to keep your thoughts focused on the things that matter most to you. So just talk to me, you guys, if I could uh, find out or check in with you, whether you're on Facebook or here with me on Zoom. What are you thinking? Is this resonating with you? Um, these were the things I got up thinking about today, which is why I just want to chat with you. Am I hitting a nerve with anyone and, and why? Talk to me. Yeah, no, I, I always have like a, I call it the happy meter, you know, I sort of check in. <laughs> I like see that. How it's going. Um, but yeah, no, being deliberate in uh, defining your tasks and assignments always, you know, for somebody who's type A, likes to get it done, it's very sure. important, especially in the beginning of the day. Otherwise, I feel like I lost half the day. Sure. And Jill, can I ask you a question that um, I hope you don't mind me asking? Are you on that checklist? Is there something that in other words, I, I appreciate, you know, uh, we're all, a lot of us are business people and we have all these tasks we need to get done to move our business forward. But is there anything on your list about pouring into you today? Uh, yeah, I, show up more? yeah, no, I, I like to exercise. So getting out and biking, awesome. you know, is a big deal for me. That at least gives me the whole head space. And then it's like, okay, now I can regroup and get back to work. Good. Awesome. Good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no, because, you know, I think that's another thing. We are so good um, at building things and creating opportunities and making things happen in our careers, taking care of our household, our families. Are we putting ourselves on that list? Are we even putting ourselves anywhere near the top of the list? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that it, because if we can't take care of ourselves, then we can't take care of anything or anyone else. And so you have to really, all of us have to take an honest look at, all these to-do lists that we make and these strategic plans, are we on there? Yeah. You know, the, I do a um, personal growth plan every year and I'll share this with all of you. It's simple. Um, and this is around the time like October is when I start to plan for next year. So I'll put a blank, I'll put this blank form on the Facebook group. I don't know if you've checked out, there's a lot of content on the Facebook group page, not just the videos, but if you go into files, there's a lot of things in there that connect to what we've talked about that you might use. So I'll put a blank form on there, but it's super easy. If you can just picture 12 boxes on a piece of paper, each box represents the month of the year. 
And I do take time. I do take some time on this, you know, and research and, and really think about who do I want to become? How do I want to grow? Um, what do I need to learn? What do I need to experience in order to meet like my personal and professional goals? So sometimes a class or a certification shows up on my growth plan. But I also ask myself, what do I want to experience? So then I sit down, I research, I, I put stuff on my calendar, I'll look up books, and I'll put down two things usually uh, each month that I intend to accomplish that will help me grow personally, help me grow spiritually, help me grow physically, help me grow in terms of you know my relationships. So it might be uh, a couple's retreat or it could be you know, something uh, like more spiritual uh, for me to experience on my own. So that personal growth plan then keep, stays in front of me and I keep a uh, connection to that so that I can accomplish the things I set out to do. It's fluid. Sometimes I have to change it up. Sometimes new stuff shows up that I didn't know about. Like, you know, I get an email about some conference or I, I hear about this new book and maybe I'm going to move things around or insert it. Uh, it's just important that you don't put too many things on each month because you want to accomplish it, right? Because then what's the point? So I'll put the blank form on there. And I think um, that would be something that I would encourage you all to work on. And uh, it's definitely been, I think, the last five or six years that I've done a personal growth plan. And, and it's not that we didn't have the, the focus on doing those things for ourselves. But when you sit down and actually plan ahead and get strategic about it, that, that's really investing in yourself. So I'm going to uh, encourage you guys to do that. Anyone else have any feedback or thought? Yeah, go ahead, Jill. I heard. No, I, I was just curious since you do so, you do this so well. This mo Monday experience, the um, the hiccups that come along, you know, having a great plan and having everything mapped out in a year, long view, short view, the hiccups that occur in life. Um, is there a way, maybe in the? And I know an, you've referenced it just in terms of how people can map out their lives. What? what examples could you share at some point, maybe down the road of the hiccups that were a challenge and how you were able to kind of take and move through them or around them or sure. ignore so, them? Sure, so a little bit more like my personal experiences? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. you're a great I mean, facilitator, but yeah. You know. I, I'm ha listen, I'm an open book. I am happy to talk about anything <laughs> you want to talk about. So, um, and I think, and I appreciate you asking me to do that because I think this is something, again, I'm sure I'm not alone on that we all have experiences and a story and th those um, challenges, those successes, those stories and experiences that you share with other people can be really meaningful to other people. And, but sometimes we shy away from it because we say, oh, I don't want to make it about me. This is about them. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about what I did or didn't do. Yet, thank you for asking that because I think that it is important that we discuss it. And believe me, I've had people say silly stuff to me like, um, oh, I love following you on social media. You look like you live such a great life. And I do, don't get me wrong. Yet, I have bad days too. Yeah. I have relationship problems from time to time too. Right. I mean, we're, I'm just as human as everyone. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, was I a good enough mother to my three adult kids? Have I messed them up forever? If you're listening, children, please tell me you're okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like we all yeah. have that. But yet yeah, those stories, the, the real life experiences and challenges and what we've learned from them everyone can benefit from you sharing. So I will definitely do that. And, and if you guys ever want uh, to know anything, just use the Facebook platform and put up a question and be like, hey, Anna, have you ever done this? And I'll do like a video or come on or whatever. So, but yeah, I'm happy to share. Um, you know, adversity definitely makes us stronger and I've had my share, believe me. <laughs> So, um, but again, uh, anyone else have anything that they want to say about what the message was this morning or what you might do with it? Oh, Sarah, you're muted. There you go. Um. I found some jobs to apply for. Yay! Oh, no. I know. Yay! Um, so anyway, uh, so I'm going to do that. But uh, but again, because I tended uh, to attach my stuff to the external things and 
Um, I'm also going to keep writing and, and, you know, keep my own, my own work, my own academic work going in the background here so that I can feel like I'm getting stuff done in that way. And, um, you know, so then if I have to dust myself off about the job stuff, it's not quite as bad because I can still say, but I got this stuff done. That's so awesome. I think that, I think, I think, you know, apropos of what Jill was saying, it's the, it's that you've got to just muster up the, all right, get up, dust yourself off, get, you know, just move on. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, like I said, life is moving pretty fast. So if you don't get up, you're going to get run over. Right. So it's, it, you know, and it's not to say you can't fall down or trip or stumble, uh, but it's really what happens after. How quickly can you get back up? So that's the resilient part. And that is showing your grit and your tenacity. And again, you know, no one promised life would be easy. And we can do hard things. We have the ability to figure it out. It's when we allow ourselves to get stuck that we shut down. Right. So again, your feelings are your feelings. I'm not saying don't feel bad about feeling overwhelmed. Don't don't say you can't feel frustrated. Yet, how long are you willing to stay there? I I don't stay there very long. Because it's it's no good for me when I do. So I have to then figure out. Okay, what's the next step? How do I keep moving without? ignoring or brushing it under the rug. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying, how do we tackle it head on? How do we figure out how to get back up? How do we break down whatever the challenge is? How do we figure it out? How do we learn from it? And what's the next step? Because that is really when you start to take responsibility for your life. And when you really start to grab life by the, I'll say by the shoulders, cause it's still early, but you grab life by the shoulders give it a little shake and say, not today, not me, not today. I am going to figure this out. I am in control and, you know, I'm going to seize the day. I'm going to, I'm going to make this. It's, it's more than just those gitchy Hallmark cards and cute little quotes I put on Facebook, right? It really is like, how am I going to make today my best day? Because all you've got is today. Let tomorrow happen tomorrow. How will you make today the best day? How will you make the best decisions about the food you put in your body, about the exercise you're going to get, about how you use your time, about how you will accomplish the things on your to-do list, how you will make progress towards successful goals. Just worry about today and then you'll do the same thing tomorrow and the same thing the next day. And that's when you'll see progress. So I, I trust you got something great out of this message. I don't know what it is, but I know everyone gets their own kind of connection to this. And um, I, I really hope that you'll spend a little time thinking about those questions. I'll put those on the Facebook page too. And I will put the um, outline of the growth plan in the uh, Facebook page as well. So you can start working on that. I would love for you to share your results. I don't know if you saw... Uh, and you can go back through the Facebook group because it's only like a post or two. But I had a great conversation with uh, one of our, with Tanya uh, Stokes, who's a member of the, the Mojo tribe here. Uh, she reached out to me and asked if I would make some time to talk to her. And I said, of course. And so Saturday morning at nine o'clock, we, you know, grabbed coffee on Zoom together. And we started having this amazing conversation. And I asked if we could record it. Uh, so there may be some other sound bites I share with you about that recording. Uh, about that conversation. And it was awesome because, you know, she's, she's doing some of the work that we've talked about and it's showing up in her life. So Tanya, I know you're going to watch this at some point. So good for you. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what I want to see come from this Facebook group is that connection, that sense of tribe. So please know if you want to reach out anytime, private message me, we can chat. I don't have to record it, but if you want me to, uh, <laughs> if you want to share with someone else, we, it's always happy. Um, we're always glad to do that. But um, I really appreciate you being here. I know you're going to have an awesome day and I will see you back here live on Monday. Uh, if I don't see you on the Facebook group before that. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Happy, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.